It's a windy but a beautiful day today in Steve's backyard. Today I'm going to be putting together one of the three landscapes that I've been threatening to put together. Uh, you may have seen me uh, assembling some pots. I assembled a pot for a vineyard landscape that's coming up. The problem is that the grape, the wild grapevine that I have has not started to bud out, but I'm seeing some buds on my bald cypress. So that was the other landscape that I was going to be putting together. Uh, it was going to be second, but today it's going to be first. Let's get right into it with a short recap of how I got to this point. I, had, I did a two-part video a while back on the planning and the pot preparation for this planting. And the idea was to come up with a stream bed that I would make a berm off of transitioning to bonsai soil, or some muck, and then some bonsai soil. Have some uh, Leptinella planted, which is what I have in my, uh, uh, my, current, plant, my current iteration of this. Um, and I'm gonna transfer it to here, along with some other uh, plantings. I've got 10 bald cypress trees, very small. Two are the parent trees, and the rest are cuttings that are starting to get their buds pushing out pretty strongly on some of them. I'm hoping they're all alive. Uh, and I have gone ahead and prepared a pot to these specifications. And since I showed it to you last, I made a few modifications. I put down a piece of slate. The slate is on three PVC stanchions, which hopefully you can see. Since I saw you last, I've actually put some levels here. Uh, I found some pieces where it gets to a knife edge and I thought I would, uh, I sanded the bottom of them and I tried to get a nice good transi uh, transition. Here I have a color match issue, but hopefully that won't matter because I'll be building a berm between them. And also I had placed these pieces of, of um, vinyl tubing uh, and since I saw you last, I cut the tops off of them because I think I'm going to need a really strong anchor point for the stream bed. And the idea of the stream bed is when I water, this will retain water, but it will be coming in contact with a berm and it will hopefully keep this hydrated for a bit longer than it normally would. So that's the plan. And all I'm going to do to the pot right now is put a drainage layer in it of pumice. So here are my bald cypress trees. I'm not 100% certain that everyone in here is alive. There might be one casualty, but if there aren't, if, if these are all living, that those had all rooted. These first four are two years old. This would be their third year as cuttings. These I just put in last year. So this would be their second year as cuttings. And these were planted, I think I planted these in 2019. So these are four years old. These were planted from seed. There were three nice trees, but these two are the only ones that survived. Now I wanna focus on the understory plants because I'm going to be taking these plants with us. <laughs> I love them. Let me see if I can get a good shot of it. I'll show some stills also. It's in flower. This is Leptinella. That's not the full name though. The full name is Leptinella Platts Black. A little hard to say. Leptinella Platts Black Brass Button. And I knew the brass button referred to the flowers, but this is the first year they've flowered for me. So I see why it says brass button. Little tiny brass buttons. And this is a, an azalea that I'll put into a small planting. So I've got to preserve all of these plantings when I take them out of the pot. This one, I'm gonna to put to the side because there are no understory plants in here. And I'll get to work taking this apart. All right, first, I'm gonna pull this stone out of here. I don't know what tools I'll be needing until I need them. I'm gonna start with this palette knife 
And I want to save all these plants, even these little tiny ones here, with the little heart-shaped leaves that I don't know what kind of weed it is, but it is indeed a weed. I know I said I'd start with the stone, but... Yeah, I guess I better. We just have to get going on it. I have a little tray of water there to put the plants in that I'm finding and preserving. The Leptinella sends out these tendrils that root So I'm not sure what that all looks like. <laughs> I had only planted it like right here and it has really taken off. To clear out all the, uh, uh, the dirt from the nursery container, I got these at the Peconic Herb Farm, which is a wonderful, wonderful nursery out on Long Island. <laughs> I've actually been dreading this. It's, it's dread and excitement all at once. Okay. As you can see, this is one plant which suits my purposes tremendously. I love creating landscapes and, and my thoughts on them are, are evolving. And I'm just going to keep trying to create them in line with my evolving thought processes. I have a lot of moss that I can use on this planting. It's, it's to look like a swamp with a riverbed that floods or a stream bed that floods. When I water it, Leptinella Platts Black Brass Button. It's cute stuff. And I like how it propagates itself. It is perfect for a swamp planting. Right, I'll put myself in fast mode as I clean the rest of this out. And that'll save you a little time. So I've got the understory plants all tucked away nicely. It's time to look at the trees. I'm just gonna go once around with my grandfather's palette knife. Lift out the trees and take a look at the roots. Okay. through all of the other uh, drainage screens. I'll have to find all those. Let's comb this out. Ah, got a big, thick circling root that will have absolutely no place in the new planting. Yeah. 
these trees are not going to be together. They're going to be on either side of that stream bed. Here's more the Tanello roots. Oh, these are great. I'll put this in with the others and I'll be right back. There are quite a few of you out there working on your small and medium and sometimes very large bald cypress trees. And I am so envious of some of those trees. But I am going to keep these in scale with the planting. got a nice buttressed root down there that I am going to take full advantage of. As I said, I'm going to be taking, well maybe I didn't say, I'm going to be taking these trees down after I'm sure that they've weathered this onslaught, you know, and survived. Let me wash this off and take a look at it. I'll do, the, I'll do the same with both. Maybe this screen will come out easier. Yeah, no, I don't think so. I got the big trees in a pail of water. Time to take out the cuttings. I said these, these four will be three years old. The rest of these, this one may be a goner. But I'll put them all in a pail of water and we'll do the root work. Interesting. This one has no roots on it, but it's coming into leaf. And it stayed in leaf all last season. So that's very interesting. And I'm just gonna separate these, put them in water, I mean, that one's got a one-sided root system. I'm gonna have to work on that. This one, grab the drainage screen, also one-sided. You know, which may come in handy with this planting. Oh, what is this? Not sure. Very tiny roots. The start of a nice root system. Nice, very nice. Okay. Okay. Trees are going in a bucket. All right, I'm gonna work on the smaller trees first. Starting from the largest of the smaller trees. That is a flat root base, but it's a little sprawling. Not to forget, it's going into a, a deep pot, so it's gonna have a chance to It's going to have a chance to spread its wings. All right, I'm just gonna be real careful here. There's a, a root right here I'm taking off, which opens up a nice root spread. I'd like to leave this one on to balance this big one, which I'm not gonna take off, but I am gonna shorten. All right, I'm gonna shorten that one to here, it really helped. This one comes back up and crosses over that other one. So I'm gonna take that one right off. 
there is a piece of it there that I'm going to leave, which seems to be going in a nice radial direction. And I think there's one underneath that's keeping this from being a little too flat right there. It sits beautifully. This one comes up, but I think I could tuck it down. Nah, I don't think I can. It's got another little rootlet starting there. This one's a little high. This one's a little high. That one's high. I don't know why it doesn't bother me, but it doesn't. Here's one that goes down and comes back up. And I'm just gonna shorten this. Too bad, that has some nice root tips happening, but a little too long. It crosses over another root, but let's see if I can't just rearrange it. Nope, can't. I cut that one off. All right, that's the root base on this tree. Nice and compact. It will fit nicely into my planting. Number one, going back in the water. This guy. Ugh. What do I do with this guy? All right, so it's clear what happened here. Everything came out one side. Here's the cutting. All the roots came out the one side, which is unfortunate, but it's flat. It could be made flat. I'm going to cut these beautiful ones off because they are impeding the flatness. Oh, that hurts. Look how nice. White tips. Very sorry, but I don't think it's beyond time. Got a root that comes up and goes over and down, also has some beautiful white tips, but I can't have that root. So I shortened it almost to nothing. These cross, but I can correct that. This one, this one goes way down. I've cut off all the healthiest roots. <laughs> Not that the rest of them aren't healthy. I'm going to want to plant these all straight. So, if this one were growing up on a rock, it would be just right. Cut the end off of that. This one's too long. This one's too long also. It's dead. And I'm gonna leave the rest of these. It's an ugly, ugly root system. And I'm going to leave it. This one. Oh my God. Talk about crossing roots. Look at that.
Can you see this with the shadow? I'm not sure. All right, what do I do here? Well, I'm going to look underneath, and right away I see a root needs to come off. Here's one that goes up and back down, but there are some nice roots coming off of it uh, earlier on. You know what? There's nothing nice coming off of that, taking the whole thing off. This comes down and is the other part of that root that crosses under. That could be interesting. I'm just going to cut the piece off that keeps it from sitting flat. And the rest of this keeps it from sitting flat. And it crosses. Can I uncross it? Not without breaking it. But let's see. I could encourage it to go the other way. It's going to require taking a little bit more of it off. I'm going to leave that piece. I think I better shorten this thing a little bit. That's that root base. Not meager. And I know this stuff lives with meager root bases. This one. Let's give that a close look. All right. It's got some stuff going down. Cut that off right away. The stuff that goes down but soft, I'm okay with. This one comes up and goes back down. It has some nice roots, but they're not doing me any good right now. Some nicer roots right next to it. That root goes down and then comes right back on itself like a U-turn. See if I can show you that. Right here, this root goes up and comes back down and does a U-turn. So, if I cut it off before it does a U-turn, I'm cutting off all the goodness. That's what I have to do. And cut this piece off. It now sits flat. 
first. It has a few more of those little springbok roots, but we'll see what, what develops over the years. It's going in like this. Then the cuttings that actually have roots Just going to shorten them. These are going to go in the back of the planting and be styled depending on how they develop. Oh Lord. I didn't have these restricted in small containers. Roots could have developed all around, but you got callus all around, and I'm just going to hope that roots develop down the road with these guys. This is going to have to be a wet spring and summer for this tree. I can't let it dry out, because these are going to be close to the top. the top of the soil mass. This one, I'm just going to take this off. I'm going to leave everything else. The rest of these have nothing but buds. So they'll be planted in the medium just the way they are. Let's move on to the big trees. Hmm. That was a dead root. This one it's got quite a bit of life on it, but it comes out from the tree a little bit too high. It's gone. This one's a little high and somewhat dead. <laughs> this one's coming off. There's a good front for this tree right there. So, with that as the front, this root, which is growing over the top of the Big root coming off. This is coming off. This is coming off. With this as the front, I've got nothing much on this side. This is not much of a root. I'm going to take it off. Looks like the tree is making that selection also. All right, I'm going to wash this a little bit more and come right back to you. All right, remembering that this is a small but deep pot. And that is a nice front. This tree, or that, shows off some really good root spread. All right, so this bit right here needs to be carved down. It now sits very flat and at a depth that I'm comfortable with. So let me go back to where I think the front of this tree is. It 
could be right here, right here, and start pruning with that as a goal. I do think these older roots are dead or dying. I'm going to take this one off. Yeah, that's a scar right in front. I'm going to leave it and just go profile. And when I go to put it in the pot, I may have to, you know, depending on where, how the front looks in there, I may have to trim these back a little bit more. But I think that's enough to sustain the tree. At least I'm hoping so. And I'll straighten it up in the pot. All right, there's a good front. That's not bad. Yeah, the widest part of the trunk is right here. So let's call that the front. Get these little wispy guys off. I'll try and pull some of these around. Not all of them can do it though. There's some coming straight up. Let's go back on themselves so I can cut that end off and not worry too much about it. This starts to come up a little bit. I think I can tuck that down. I'm going to make this one a little bit shorter. And I think, I think that's it. All right, let me clean this up and get to planting. Okay, you're looking at the front of my new landscape pot. My common bald cypress landscape. I'm going to concentrate on getting the area just under the uh, stream bed filled in. I am going to divide this up into two parts. If part one wasn't long enough with the prepping of the trees and the root work and the planting, and part two will be the muck work and all of that.
Now I intend the muck to begin here and be able to be tamped down here somewhat. So I'm going to leave some space for it. I'll clean everything out of this trough before I do the muck work, obviously. Got a lot more. You know what? Let's concentrate on getting tree one in. So, the primary tree is going to go here. And as I mentioned before, let's see. As I mentioned before, these are going to be cut down, meaning chopped at some point in the future. But that's kind of where I'm seeing it in terms of where I want the flare to show. And that fits nicely there. Yeah, right there. Gonna mound up some soil right there. Position that tree the way I see it in my mind. get that worked in a little. It's not going to be easy keeping these trees small. I do want them vertical. All right, tree number two has got to be here. And that's where I want that tree to be visible. I said a little further back. I still have a lot of trees to put in here, so I'm, I'm going to I'm going to place it here. Mound up some soil here. Position the tree. Right about there. this in. Keeping an eye on the positioning of the tree at all times. And I am going to water as I go. perfectly dry now. And help me steady the trees in the pot. Okay, that's getting me my look. Moving on to smaller trees. I'll be right back when I get them. 
I'll plant up the rest of them, speed it up a little. All right, here's a look at the forest straight on. I'm gonna head up and point it down now. You can see a little bit more of the trees. In part two, I'll be doing all the detail work. I'll be putting the muck in, securing some of these trees with muck, with stones. But the idea of this first watering is to kind of show you what my thought was with regard to the stream and how it might collect water. I'm giving it a nice thorough water. I've been watering it the whole time I was planting it up. So far I don't see any water in the tray below. That should change pretty soon. I'm just watering the stream. I want the roots to grow deep down in this pot. Okay, the stream drains, leaves it a little wet. I plan on putting some other stones in there, but I'm going to be setting the muck also to help support the sides of this and I'll be doing that additional planting so look for that in part two so me and my swamp cypress the swamp is done or the step one of the swamp is done this will take up less space in my greenhouse where I'm going to leave it and by the way I will be chopping these trees but not until I know that they're healthy. Right now, I think I'll go through and just take away any branches that look like they're interfering with other branches, but otherwise I'm just gonna let it leaf out the way it wants to. Thank you very much for joining me while I did this little experiment, and thank you for keeping me company in my backyard.